the whole idea of a stealth camper van just flew out the window. Well, I had some help with that. got some lights, we got some more lights and the control switch, two actually. These are the Oxbeam 5 inch pod lights. This particular model has a orange daytime running light. Also got some uh, side shooters and the front shooters. These are absolutely massive. <laughs> I mean, just to give you a comparison, these are some side shooters that I bought a couple of years ago from eBay with about 40 quid. This is like a, like a toy and it's plastic. This one is full, full metal. It just says quality everywhere you look at it. It's just a superb piece of work. And I really don't just say that, this is heavy duty, it's all, it's all metal, it's, it's heavy, it's well built, I absolutely love them. In the box comes with everything that you need, stickers, mounting instructions, we got the lights itself, we got the, the, the wiring uh, harnessed. This is how we're gonna turn on or off the, uh, the lights. One is for the light itself and one is for the daytime running light, for the, uh, for the orange light. Also, we got the, uh, the mounting screws and they do look quality. I do believe that they are stainless steel. The first things to go up will be the lights. I'm using this Unistrat rail. This is 21 by 41. So it's gonna be something like this, but with four of them. I'm gonna run the wires from the roof through here go to the front then come back somewhere behind all this that's the that's the easiest way i could think of okay so the lights are on the van all tested they look amazing uh, they do work they work brilliantly i can't wait to finish this whole this whole setup because I'm, I'm super excited so uh, I've, run, uh, I've run a wire uh, somewhere over here, uh, through the roof, all the way through there, through there. The wire will go under this bench, sorry about the mess. It will go under the bench and under the bed. And I'm just hoping that I have everything included in this kit. Bearing in mind that this is a uh, long wheelbase printer, I kind of want to avoid uh, to add extra wires. Let me show you real quick what's inside this, uh, this two switch panel box. We got the manual, we got some stickers. These are stickers for the, for the controllers, a lot of them. Waterproof housing for, for the panels. You got all kinds of wires. Now these, these will uh, have to be connected to the battery. We got two positives because you will need one to run from the battery to this uh, this breaker. It's a 60 amp breaker, and then from the breaker onwards to the to the main control unit. You got the negative. You got one of these um, ACC plug. A lot of. Uh, bolts and all kinds of things this is the main brains of the of the control panel so everything uh, goes in here and of course you can connect uh, eight uh, eight appliances or whatever you want to connect they all go really nice in here 
it's a good quality. You've got some uh, some spare fuses. Then you got the uh, the switch panels, two of them. Nice metal finish. They really are. They really look okay. Then you got mounting brackets. These are if you want to uh, install them flush, or these are in case you want it installed like in an angle or something. You even got a screwdriver, <laughs> zip ties and all that, and some more uh, brackets. Of course, you also got the wires for the controls. Now you got two controls, um, two cables. One's 20 feet and one it's 10 feet. 20 feet I think it's about 6 meters so I'm gonna start pulling the cable from the front because that's where I want to install one of these uh, controllers I need one in the front on the dash and one somewhere I think over there next to the other controllers the only thing is I just don't want to put more wires I don't want to cut this and extend it or do anything like that just hoping that everything right here in the box will be sufficient so i'm not going to connect it to the van's battery the starter battery i'm going to connect it on my leisure battery Like the way they thought of everything is this these terminals are m8 most of the batteries are m8 and this is m6 exactly to fit the uh, to fit the, the controller well unfortunately i did have to extend the wires and the wires are coming down from the roof to this post right here it comes to sort of like a t-junction you got a pair of cables going up front to the remotes to the actual controls you got wires of course which are coming up and you got the wires that have to go to the power source now i did have to extend the uh, the power cables and i'm gonna make this very very clear and please don't ignore it just make sure you size your wires correctly um, initially what i wanted to do is run both sets of lights on a single wire all the way to the back into the into the brains of the controller so then i will have just one button one switch for all four lights yeah for two sets but after i was doing some uh, some tests with uh, with the thermal camera turns out the cables were not extremely hot but it was it, they were getting close at around 40 degrees after about 10 minutes I know probably that's not a problem, they can take more than that, but just to be on the safe side, just make sure you size your wires accordingly. I cannot stress this enough. So what I did is I run two cables, yeah, separate for each set of, of lights. So then I will have um, basically two switches to turn on or off the lights independently, so I'll have two lights on one switch and two lights on another switch yeah i know more cables more wires a bit more complicated but i will explain why it's not such a big deal installing this is really easy and straightforward but what you should know is that all of the wiring will come through the back of this unit so if you're let's say if you're building your camper van probably a good idea to fit this early in your build so you will have this whole thing mounted flush probably against the wall or something in my case i'm just too far ahead on my on my build so i i just couldn't be bothered to mount it flush but you do have this uh, these brackets you have two of them either one to either mount it uh, flush or like this semi suspended or something very straightforward you got the positive you got the negative uh, you can't go wrong, there's literally nothing that you can misplace or whatever. As you can see, you got eight uh, potential consumers. Uh, number one and number two, you can put appliances or consumers up to 30 amps, next to 20 amps, uh, five and six, only 10 amps, and seven and eight, only five amps. So I've got the aux beam lights on number one, and number five you can see each one of them has a 10 amp 
fuse and number five i've got the, uh, the interior lights with a five amp fuse um, and if you're gonna put like let's say something on um, on the 30 amp slot right here on number two of course you will need uh, another fuse for this like i put my um, my led bar on the bumper uh, that's low consumption so i've put that on number two with a five amp breaker so as i've said everything's really easy here is really straightforward uh, nothing to be concerned about uh, everything has its place it's, it's cleared it's labeled everything it's it's just the way as it's supposed to be like really really simple and to finish it off you can put this nice case on top of it and then it looks definitely better with less exposed wires now with the controllers you have two options you can either mount it like this flush something like that for me and i'm thinking about putting these two buttons right here or you can mount it with one of these brackets and then you will be able to move this up and down i don't know which one to choose i don't like options <laughs> yeah definitely go with flush wow they are not straight well depending on which angle you're looking if i tilt the camera they can't be straight okay so this is the setup that i'm using at the moment let me just run you through it got the roof light roof light the light bar and the interior lights that's all my uh, consumers at the moment for every one of these buttons you have three modes so you press the on off button twice you're gonna start blinking so the red is on on off blue is on momentary so that means that you're gonna press it and you're gonna light up when you're gonna release you're gonna shut off and you got the green which will be the strobe to change the color of the light you need to press the on off button and any other button and then using number one and number four just dial on the wheel wherever you want to go when you pick a uh, color just stop it just press save and that's it i've chosen this uh, tint of red uh, just to match with uh, with the dials of my sprinter now because of my setup unfortunately these controllers cannot be shut down i mean they can but i do have to go in the back and manually switch off the fuse which cuts power to everything basically but that's just because i've chosen not to connect the acc wire to an existing component of the car now it is a very simple job all you have to do is just run another cable just a positive to any consumer on the car so at the minute you will turn the ignition on you will have power on this but the way i set it up is that i'm gonna use this uh, these remotes and the whole thing for off-grid as well so i'm gonna have multiple uh, lights like dimming lights on the outside i've also put the interior lights probably i'm gonna put the fridge and if you're gonna use the acc wire while it's connected to your vehicle's battery then you will only get power when you're gonna turn the key in the ignition so it's it's uh, it doesn't make any sense i wished that this on off button just shut off all the lights and everything on on this remote because the light is not turning off no matter what you do even during the night it's gonna dim yeah it's not a it's not a big consumer uh, it doesn't even use 0.1 amps so almost nothing but this light is always on and that can be a bit mm annoying i would say it's not a big deal it's not a huge deal but my suggestion would be why not use this on off button just to turn off the remote itself of course this on off button so what you can do is you can turn on all your consumers right and then you, with the one press of a button you can just turn them off on or off of course everything you do on this controller is going to be copied um, on the on the other controller as well now let's do some power consumption test first i want to switch on all four of them 
so all four lights are now on floodlights and the daytime running lights all four of them and together we are pulling out 12.6 amps if we turn off the daytime running lights we are pulling 11.6 now a good thing about my setup is that i can turn on or off two at the time if i don't need them i just won't use them okay so we are in the woods as you're about to see now let's do some uh, light test these are the headlamps from the car this is the 20 pound light bar from ebay these are two of the aux beams and these are four of the aux beams <laughs> wow it's insane let me turn it off so these are the headlamps from your car yeah look at the aux beams <laughs> wow i mean i do have to say they shoot a bit too high but wow <laughs> these are your normal headlights okay these are the aux beams <laughs> oh my god okay let's put the high beam on the high beam from the car okay wow almost make, makes no difference <laughs> these are the aux beams wow <laughs> just look at that high beam aux beams <laughs> even just two of them it's absolutely enough just look at that this is two of them this is four of them so I like the fact that they shoot sideways as well. So you can see the trees on the sides are pretty well lit up. And also, you got this crazy long beam up front. So they do make a lot of, uh, a lot of light on the sides as well. Wow. The camera is confused. No, it's not a new FO. It's just the aux beams. wow you can definitely see the the side lights right here in action you can see i'm tilting on the right and they do shoot on the sides very very well these are just the two of them more light <laughs> my god wow. 